Well, Ken, I know you've been the main man for playing around with different presentations with the sink since it came out. Got a little rig to show us that you had that fish on earlier? Yeah, I have had Joe. It's, um, I'd like to say it's really complicated and impress everyone with my rig genius, but unfortunately it really isn't. Straightforward, size six, outturned hook. Again, a little bit different. Most people, especially on day tickets, they're going on eights or on tens for some reason. And I think it's because little lakes, people think that you use little baits. So I'm using size 16 pop-ups or size 16 wafters. So yeah, the rig, really, really simple. The sink prototype, a bit of Samson hair braid, a hook ring swivel, and as I said, the size six trotty hook. Through the front, give myself quite a good tag end. And then I go up 11 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Always count to myself because I was really bad at maths at school. Seriously was. Okay, but then what I do is I come down one, two. And that stops the strangulation of the knot, especially when you've gone up the shank so many times. It just stops that knot pulling. Just locks it into place. Yeah. Through the back. And that's part one of the rig done. Always use a hook ring swivel for every rig that I do. Yeah? Yeah, every rig um, has a hook ring swivel. And when I finish this rig, you'll see how I get the separation. So, tag end through the ring. And then the ring sits there. And then the sink, he says, goes through. Now, one of the things I've noticed about the sink, um, compared to other coated braids, is the thinness of the diameter. So to go through the hook eye two or three times, four times, it's not a problem, whereas with other coated braids and other materials, it's a bit tight. Cut off. And just blob the end. And that then holds it in place. So what I've what I've basically created is to a lot of people the Choddy D or the D rig. Yep. Then take a Samson hair braid, put that through. Yep. And double it up. Then a cork dust wafter, because I want to offset the weight not only of the hook but actually the ring swivel. and then pull it on. Now, to get my separation, all I do is just pull the boilie just on to, to the barrel, right. to the barrel. And as you can see, I then get the separation that I'm after with the blowback D effect. Then it's just a simple um, overhand knot that then plugs the boilie. I'm getting old now so I definitely don't use anything fiddly like hair stops <laughs> and especially in winter because they're so fiddly with cold fingers so <laughs> um, I just double knot over snip the ends off and then it's just a just a quick blob like that to melt the Samson and I just push it in and there's my hair stop. Okay, and what you'll notice, just by holding at that angle, we've already got it sort of as an that's going to drop into the fish's mouth. What I do at the other end is I just simply loop the length of the hook that I want the hook length to be. And I just literally go through and do an overhand loop. And that, with the strength of the, of the sink, it's not going to go anywhere. No? No. Um, quite a big loop as well, is that for Yeah, it's quite a big loop. The, re the reason for that is, is that when you talk about casting out an anti-tangle, a lot of people would have threaded on an anti-tangle sleeve and then pulled that up when it's tied onto the line. What I do is I loop that onto the swivel and because this is quite a stiff material, that then acts as my anti-tangle boom and it kicks, it kicks it away, whether I'm using a helicopter or a leg clip or an inline, it always kicks it away. So it just saves me having to put another bit on because my whole my whole view on things is the less that's there, 
the better. The better, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I hate jingle jangle, really do. And then the other great thing about the sink is because it is stiff, and you see it's straight away, it's going into a curve, like you would do with a choddy. Just tease it and play with it for a little bit. Even though it's an offset eye, it turns in. So there's no anti-tangle tubing, nothing needed, no, you know, just an out-turned hook. And as you see from the fish that we just caught, it does work. So. Very simple. And yeah. is that the length you'd normally use then? Have you got a standard length? If I'm fishing on a clear bottom, I, I try to fish as short a hook length as I can. And I use a very heavy lead because what I want is for them to pick it up and be, be nailed. Um, but what I also do is I fish a size 11 swivel inside a lead clip so that I actually get a running rig as well. So they sort of get nailed, then they try to run off. You know, they've got a free running line. Can't use the weight of the lead to shake Absolutely it. Absolutely And also, no. in situations like this, I don't know about you, but, you know, I like to use slack lines because most people don't. Absolutely. I mean, you, you, you'll come up here at the weekend, everyone casts to the opposite bank, tight lines or they'll put a line sinker on and again you're still fishing primarily a tight line because the the ground is undulating so when the fish is swimming around on the ground it's still going to detect that line so yeah um slack line fishing um is how i fish and line obviously with all a, the time. a running setup it just improves your indication yeah absolutely and um every every takes an absolute absolute screamer and this fish i mean it, it wasn't hooked in the bottom lip wasn't hooked in the top it was hooked right inside you know, real good deep hook hold. You know, no need to break the coat in or do anything fancy. Just put a little curve in and it's gonna turn. 